everybody. In this video, you're learning about value tuples in C Sharp. The agenda of my video will be what is a value tuple, syntax and declaration of a value tuple, difference between a tuple and a value tuple, named members in a value tuple, value tuple as method, parameter, and return type. So let's get started. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a console application in Visual Studio. Okay, so over here, create a console application in Visual Studio. Now first, let's talk about what is a value tuple. Basically, a value tuple is a structure that is the value type representation of a tuple. And we had some disadvantages while using tuples. So all of those are resolved over here. So let me just go to the disadvantages while using tuples. So you have to I, access the properties by item 1, item 2, item 3. And it is a reference type. So it will be allocated in heap memory. And that can result into CPU intensive operations. And there's even one more disadvantage. That is, it can only hold up to 8 values. So all of these problems are resolved by when you're using a value type. And a value tuple is only available in C Sharp 7 or higher. And um, .NET 4.0, I mean .NET Framework 4.7, 4.0 is for tuples. So maybe you cannot or find value tuples in Visual Studio. So mostly it should be because you're using an older version of Visual Studio, it may be like um, 2015. So I'm currently using 2019, so that's already installed. So if you're using an older version like that, let me just show you how you can resolve that issue. So what you have to do first is open up the Solution Explorer over here and right click on your solution. So in my case, it is CS Demo, but your can be any name. And you have to search for manage you get packages for solution. Okay, click on that. And then your window to change to something like this. Program.ts is over here itself. Just go back over here. So instead of here, select the browse tab. It can be on any tab, but you have to select the browse tab. And then search for system. System add value tuple. So it says no packages found. So why is that? So if you see this kind of a screen, then most likely, uh, I mean, you have to click on settings and then you have to click on this plus button over here. So this will, so that'll add this over here. So if you see this empty, then that means you have not added any package sources yet. Then it's not going to work because all of these come from the NuGet.org package. Now give this name. So um, I'm just going to call this NuGet.org. And now given this source over here, it's https com slash slash api.nugget.org forward slash v3 slash index dot json Jason, click on OK. And now select from here, select nuget.org and then it's searching for system dot value tuple. And now we should get some results over here. So let it just search for that and after that we should get it. So it loads this up over here. And as you can see, I have a tick mark over here, the first one. I have a tick mark, that's because I've already installed this. If you're using, I mean, if you don't have this tick mark, then you should go ahead and install this, and this tick mark will be there after you go ahead and install it. But I'm not gonna do that because it is already installed on my machine, and I don't need to install that again. Now, if you don't have this package installed, then go ahead and pause the video and install the package and come, into, come back and do it. So for now, we don't, or I don't need that tab anymore. Let's talk more about tuples, I mean value tuples. 
Now let's talk about how we can create the syntax and declaration for a value. So before doing that, I'm just going to show you how we can create a tuple. And if you have not watched my video about tuples, then I will strongly recommend you to go and watch that before watching this. So in, from the last video, we have to declare tuple by tuple, tuple class. Tuple, and then let's say student, this is student ID, int, string, student name, and short. Close that up and give your tuple a name. So, if I name the tuple, and initialize this, you know, tuple of string and short, and then brackets for the values. And inside of here, we have to pass in the values. And we even have another way. So, you can just say var tuple equals tuple.create, tuple.create, and then we need Bracket. So instead of here, you have to pass in item one. So let's first pass in the name of the student. So just in the student ID. So let's just set this to 10 and then the division. So now let's take a look at how we can create a value tuple. So this is how we can create a tuple. Now let's take a look at how we can create a value tuple. So in order to do that, I'm going to say var, so value tuple, and initialize this to brackets. And inside here, you have to have um, the first value. So let's call this, or let's say set this to six. Second value is going to be a 10, and the third value is going to be. So, as you can see, this is a more simplified way so, than creating a normal tuple. Now, there are even two more ways of how you can create a tuple, a value tuple. So, the second way, let me just show you. So, you have to say value tuple, and then instead of here, you have to put in, I mean, you have to open. Uh, angle bracket and instead of here pass in the type first it's going to be string and then it's going to be an integer and then it's going to be short close that angle bracket up and this is again the identifier for your tuple there's even one more way if we can do this same thing oh wait did we use that so we don't need this we just need brackets and then that bracket up over here. This will work the same way. So now let me print the elements of this tuple. Value tuple console. So I'm gonna say var simple the simple way. And I'm gonna say console dot byte line value tuple value tuple value tuple dot item one. Even this is gonna work with the value tuple. There's even another way of how you can print it. So item two. So if you have not provided any name for the members, then we can just access it by item, item one, item two, item three, and so on. So this is basically the same as it's for couples. Now let's go ahead and talk about named members. So over here, where we declare our value tuple, instead of var, I'm going to say two brackets. And first we have a string. So I'm going to say string. And then I'm going to give this a name. Because this is a named member. ID. So as you can see, I'm using pas the Pascal naming convention because these are properties. And then secondly, um, these will be working as properties. Secondly, I'm going to have an int. Um, I'm going to call, oh wait, over here we said the string to ID. I'm sorry, we need to set that name and this should be ID. Sorry for that. ID. And then we'll have a character for division.
And now instead of printing out value tuple dot item one, I'm gonna print out value tuple dot. As you can see, we have division ID and name. So let's print out name first, and then second we will print out ID. Then we will print out division. So let's go ahead and run the program. And we should get the output of the program. And in the first line, it should print out option. And then second, it should print out 10. And then third, it should print out D. So let's go ahead and run the program and check what will be the output. So as you can see, the output is what we expected. 10, sorry, output 10 and 10. So let's go ahead and close this. There's even another way of how we can do or achieve the same thing. So let me show you that. I'm just going to comment out this line. So over here, I'm going to say var. It's out of here. Oops. And change that to var. And I'm going to set this equal to um, over here, we don't need to specify the type. We need brackets and then name colon with value. So let's set this to options. And then we'll have ID. ID. Colon, we will set this to 10, and then division, we will set this to D, just like that. Now, if we go ahead and run the program, we should get the same output. So, let me just run the program, and as you can see, we get the same output. So, they, these were the two ways of how to create a named member in by using a value tuple. So we had a disadvantage of a value tuple that we, I'm sorry, of a tuple that we can only access the elements with item one, item two, and so on. But over here, we can create name members, and it'll make more sense when we are actually using the name over here, right? Okay. Now, if you're working with a value tuple, then there's no restriction. You can have more than eight um, values. So, but but we're, while working with normal tuples, you can only have up to eight values. So even that is an advantage of a value tuple. So now we're going to take a look at how we can um, have value tuples as parameters for methods. So we don't need these console.write line methods, so I'm just going to comment them out. And I'm going to define a new method that is static and Turn nothing, so void and print tuple. Now this time we'll say print value tuple. And then brackets, and instead of here, again you have to put in brackets. And here you have to specify um, the tuple or value tuple type. So first we're gonna have a string and then we're gonna have int, not ID, int. Then we're gonna have char director. Now let's go ahead and give this a name. So let's go ahead and call this like information. And then the body. The body for this um, method. So instead of here, we're going to use a console.writeLine method. And again, from the last video we recall, we learned about how we can use dollar sign. So we're going to have the dollar sign. And then we're going to say name. Colon. And then instead of brackets. Instead of here, you have to say information. Information dot item. So if you would have given a name over here, then you should have accessed that by the name. But in our case, we don't have a name. So this is ID, and this is item two. It'll be item three, and this time it's gonna be um, division, right? So division, and. Let's go ahead and 
actually call this method inside of the main method. But before doing that, we'll just clean all of this up. No, we don't need it. Now let's go ahead and call print value tuple. So print value tuple, you have to pass in first the name. So shift. And then secondly, you have to pass in an integer. That is ID 10. And at last you have a director B. So division. Okay. So now we're gonna um, put all of this inside of a name parameter because that's how we pass it. So we have to say information, not in information. That is a parameter. I've already talked about method parameters in one of my last pre previous videos. And then bracket. And then as you can see, now we are wrapping this whole thing inside of a named parameter. And now let's add a semicolon there. Let's run the program, and now we should be getting the correct output. So just click Control plus F5 in order to run my program. Okay, it says name is option J pen D. So if we change the values over here, like you can change the name to object and run the program again, and instead of object, it's going to print out object. As you can see, it has to a change. Now let's take a look at how we can set the return type of a method to a value tuple. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take out this parameter. Take it out. And over here, what I'm going to do, no, not there. Over here, we are returning a void. So it won't return anything. So instead of that, I'm just going to say bracket, string, int, and short. And then just take all of this out. I'm going to say return. I'm going to return 1, 2, and 3. Now we can do that. I'll return a string first, objects, and then I'll return an integer. So this time let's write 50. And we'll return a character. And all of this should be inside of brackets. I'm going to do that. Brackets. And we're just going to call that over here. What we're going to do is take this out of here. Take that. And we're going to assign that value. So print value. Tuple. So we'll assign that to value tuple. So this may be a little bit confusing. So actually, what this um, variable is going to hold is a value that is returned from the method. In our case, object 50 and C. Now let's go ahead and print down to the console value tuple dot item 1, item 2, and then item 3. Go ahead and program and it should print out object 50 and C. Object 50 and C. Okay, correct. Okay. That's how we can set the return type of a method to a tuple. So now I hope you have understood about value tuples in C -shirt. If you like the video, you can like and share this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching and goodbye till the next video.